In the previous video, we talked about the various features of the equilibrium constants. In this one, we are going to be talking about application of equilibrium constants. And I know there are three. Uh, for the first one is it predicts if the extent of a reaction. Uh, the second is it predicts the direction of the reaction. And the third is it helps calculate the equilibrium concentrations. So let's start with the first one that is predicting the extent of the reaction. First of all, Kc, that is our equilibrium constant, does not tell us the rate of a reaction. So we don't know how fast A will get converted to give us B. That's not given by the equilibrium constant. However, it gives us the extent to which the reaction takes place. That is, how much of A got converted to how much of B. That is given by the equilibrium constant. So let's take as always, a uh, general reaction AAA A plus BB gives rise to CC plus DD. Now, as we know from the past couple of videos, we know how to write the equation for KC. So KC equals to concentration of C to the power C, the stoichiometric coefficient, Concentration of D to the power D, the stoichiometric coefficient, then B to the power, no, let's do it in order. So it will be A to the power A and B to the power B. Right, this is the equation for calculation of the equilibrium constant Kc. Now, from this equation, you can see how the concentration of reactants and products are related to Kc. So Kc is directly proportional to the concentration of products and it is inversely proportional to the concentration of the reactants. Okay. Basically, what this means is Kc is directly related to the concentration of products, which will mean that when there is a high value of Kc, which it implies that the concentration of products are high. On the other hand, if there is a low value of Kc, then the concentration of reactants are high. Does that make, I hope that makes sense. So basically, you have a high value, so you have two cases, one high value of Kc, okay, when it's high, then this implies concentration of products is high. Right, the concentration of products are high, so there is a high value of Kc. Now, this implies that a reaction A plus B gave rise to C plus D, a lot of C plus D, and that means the reaction proceeded to a greater extent. Okay, and similarly, if you have a low value of Kc, since you have an inverse proportionality, it is, implies concentration of the reactants are high, then this means reaction did not proceed to a great extent. Okay, if again, if this does not make sense, completely fine. Let's take this reaction. Okay, A plus B gave rise to C plus D. Now, in the initial part, you place these two substances in together and then it will start forming C and D. Right, now let's assume case 1 where C plus D is high. Okay, because the concentration of C and D is so high, it obviously implies that the reaction took place to a greater extent. It went forward to a greater extent. On the other hand, if concentration of A and B was still high, it means that the reactants 
did not get converted to give us products which means the reaction did not proceed to a great exit or it did not a lot of the reactants didn't get converted to the products and so the concentration of products is low concentration of reactants are high and that in turn means that reaction did not proceed to a greater extent so we are using the equilibrium coefficient as an indicator of reaction being proceeded to which to a greater extent or a less extent so if kc is high first of all kc is directly proportional to the concentration of the products so higher the value of kc more is the product which means there are more <clears throat> the reaction went forward to a greater extent on the other hand Kc is inversely proportional to the concentration of reactants, which means higher the lower the value of Kc, lower the con uh, sorry higher the concentration of the reactants, which means reaction did not proceed to a great extent. So in your textbook, you've been given three points. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave this here. Um, let's just separate this out okay so first case is where kc is greater than 10 to the power 3 so K here kc is very large which means the reactant the products will pre the will dominate the reactants so the reaction proceeds nearly to completion when it's 10 to the power 3 is when Kc is greater than 10 to the power 3, reaction proceeds nearly to completion. This is because the value of Kc is so high. Now, you've been given various reactions where Kc values have been given. For example, um, 2H2 plus O2 gives rise to 2H2O. At 500 Kelvin, Kc for this particular reaction is 2.4 into 10 to the power 47, which means the reaction has undergone to a great extent, which means you have a lot more product than you have the reactant. Um, these again are given in your textbooks. Uh, so in both, in all the cases, if you notice, the value of Kc is very, very high. It's higher than 10 to the power 3. And this means that the products have formed and like the products predominate the reactants and reaction has almost finished. Like it proceeded to completion. The next one is Kc is less than 10 to the power minus 3. Now here, Kc is lesser than uh, 10 to the power minus 3, which means it's very small. Uh, and it means that the reactants predominate the products and reaction will probably not even proceed. Again, your, the example in your textbook, uh, the first one is basically the opposite. That is 2H2O gives rise to 2H2 plus O2 at 500 Kelvin. Kc equals to 4.1 into 10 to the power minus 48. So let's take the example of just water. Okay, so 2H2 plus O2 gives rise to 2H2O. At 500 Kelvin, Kc equals to 2.4 into 10 to the power 47. Now, the reverse of this reaction, 2H2O gives rise to H2, 2H2 plus O2. At the same temperature, 500 Kelvin, Kc is equal to 4.1 into 10 to the power minus 48. Now, these are essentially the forward and the backward processes of the same reaction. However, the forward process at 500 Kelvin proceeds nearly to completion. In case of the backward, at 500 Kelvin, Kc is 4.1 into 10 to the power minus 48. What does this mean? This just means that our water, in both cases, you have a lot of water. In this case, it's a product. Here, it is the reactant. So here, water is not going to break to give us hydrogen and oxygen at 500 Kelvin. And here, hydrogen and oxygen actually combine to give us water at 500 Kelvin. It's just that the concentration of products in this case is going to be high. The concentration of reactants is going to be high in this case because of the value of Kc. So Kc is 2.4 to 10 to the power 47, which means 
directly proportional to the concentration of products. You have a high value. 4.1 and 10 to the power minus 48. It's very low, which means it has a high concentration of the reactants and a low concentration of the product. You can also see that Kc would probably be somewhat like the con which tell us that the concentration of product is actually low in this case. So that is the two examples that I wanted to discuss. And if it is in the range, so we talked about Kc being greater than 10 to the power 3 and less than 10 to the power minus 3. So in between 10 to the power 3 and minus 3, it depends on the reaction you are talking about. For example, so for example, H2 plus I2 gives rise to 2H, excuse me, 2HI. So at 700 Kelvin, Kc equals to 57. 0 0.0 and uh, N2O4 gives rise to NO2 at 298 Kelvin Kc equals to 4.64 into 10 to the power minus 3. So in both cases we are not really able to predict uh, what would what we would expect. Okay it will uh, basically you have an appreciable concentrations of both reactants and products so essentially these systems are sort of at equilibrium and there the, the extent of the reaction you have both reactants and products so which means the reaction is in equilibrium in the first case you were able to say reaction almost finished and it gave us the product in the second case reaction did not even occur or like it occur to a very less extent whereas in this case it there is an equilibrium that is formed because there is an appreciable concentration of both the reactants as well as the products so this arrow is given in your textbook uh, so when you have the value of kc negligible 10 to the power minus 3 1 10 to the power 3 and extremely large so when it is negligible reaction hardly proceeds which is exactly what we saw in this case, right? So reaction hardly proceeded. We just had water. On the other hand, when it's extremely large, reaction proceeded almost to completion. Completion, I hope I spelled it correctly. Um, and here in this case, 10 to the power, in between 10 to the power minus 3 and 10 to the power 3, reactants and products are present in equilibrium. So I'm just going to say equilibrium. So basically, Casey is able to tell us how much, I mean, the extent of the reaction. First of all, I would, <clears throat> so, here you have the, the general reaction, Kc is directly proportional to the concentration of products and Kc is also inversely proportional to the concentration of reactants. Another thing, I, I don't know if it will help you understand this better. Now let's take for example, the value of Kc is low. Okay, Kc is low, which will imply the concentration of products are also low and this in turn means that the reaction did not proceed to a great extent. Okay, when the Kc value is high, concentration of products is also going to be high, which means that the reaction proceeded to a greater extent. If you've not understood this, the whole reactants part of it, if you understand just the product part of it, that's fine too. That will help you just determine if a reaction proceeded in, to a great extent or not. So essentially, when Kc value of Kc is low, the concentration of products are also going to be low, which in turn means that there is a high amount of the reactants left, which means, again, reactants do not proceed to a 
great extent. We talked about three cases where Kc is greater than 10 to the power 3, Kc is less than 10 to the power minus 3. In both these cases, these are extremes. When it's Kc is greater than 10 to the power 3, there is a high concentration of the products, which in turn means that the reaction proceeded to a greater extent. On the other hand, when Kc is less than 10 to the power minus 3, you would have lesser concentration of the products, which in turn means that the concentration of reactants are high and the reaction did not proceed to a great extent. On the other hand, in between 10 to the power minus 3 and 10 to the power 3, there is an appreciable concentration of both reactants and products, which means our chemical reaction is in equilibrium. I hope you understood this. And in the next video, we will be discussing the direction, predicting the direction of the reaction.